Africa's current account has emerged as a risk to the exchange rate outlook following the further widening of the country's current account deficit in the second quarter. We can expect it to widen further and for the, for the main reason being the wild card at the moment being the South African Rand because if you look at our trade number, our trade number widened very significantly in the last data release that we saw purely because we've seen exports deteriorating. Export volumes has continued their decline, falling 7.7% in September, while imports also fell during the month, down a more modest 4.2% month on month. The only way to really improve the current account deficit is to start exporting more uh, and importing less. It means to become more productive, to produce more and more cheaply for export purposes and at the same time to become more savings conscious so that you don't waste all your money on imported goods that you can't afford. The current account deficit has been financed mainly through foreign portfolio inflows, but this could pose a risk to the exchange rate unless it moderates over the coming months. We are still an economy that is very reliant on foreign capital. Um, if we don't get it, of course, um, it's immediately uh, bad for the rand in the sense that the rand would depreciate and of course that would put pressure on interest rates. Uh, it would also put pressure on our long-term interest rates so the financing of fixed investment in the economy will become more expensive. It will on the other hand be even more detrimental than for your savings because the return on your savings will diminish. Foreign investor confidence is important for continued capital inflows into the country, but this has recently come under pressure following the downgrades by both Moody's and Standard & Poor's. The big danger of the downgrades of, by Moody's and S&P is that foreigners may become less inclined to want to buy South African government bonds. And since that has been the major source of our capital inflows, uh, if that were to dry up, we would be in serious trouble. Fortunately, even with the downgrades, South African government bonds are still regarded as investment grade and our rating is still not that low.